Hi, my name is Mark and I'm a Yale admissions officer. Thanks for taking some time to learn about Yale's approach to need-based financial aid and holistic application review. This presentation is about Yale, but much of what I'll cover will be relevant for many other highly selective colleges across the United States. Preparing to apply for admissions and financial aid can be stressful and can feel overwhelming. No matter how well prepared you feel, applying to college involves a great deal of uncertainty, and that uncertainty can cause a lot of anxiety. Rather than detailing specific instructions about how to apply for admissions and aid, this presentation is designed to give you a foundational understanding of how Yale's admissions and financial aid officers approach our work and the philosophies and values on which our process is built. We hope that this helps you ground your own college application process in reality, not speculation or rumor. And we hope it makes you feel more confident about what happens after you submit an application. I encourage you to remember that real people are involved in every step of the process. I love being an admissions officer because I get to meet an amazingly diverse group of real people from all over the world. Although it can feel like a fierce competition, remember that everyone involved in the college search process, applicants, parents, counselors, and admissions officers like me, are all working towards the same goal, seeing every college-ready student matriculate at a school where they can thrive academically and socially with the financial support their family needs. Yale's need-based financial aid program can be summarized in this phrase, affordable for everyone. I imagine it's probably not the first thing you think of when you hear the name Yale. It's my job to try to change your mind about that. Although Yale's sticker price is quite high, over $80,000 per year for tuition, housing, the meal plan, travel, books, and personal expenses, most Yale families pay far less than that, and many will never receive a Yale bill. Nearly 60 years ago, Yale became the first American research university to adopt a need-blind admissions policy and a need-based financial aid policy. Need-blind admissions means that as an admissions officer, I never need to be concerned about a family's finances when making admissions decisions with my colleagues. Need-based financial aid means that every penny of the more than $220 million in scholarship funds that were awarded to undergraduates last year, they were all given out on the basis of a family's demonstrated financial need. Every award is calculated to meet a family's full financial need without requiring any loans. Yale does not award any merit scholarship dollars. A student's athletic ability, their test scores, or where they're from makes no difference in calculating how much aid they will receive. Yale is one of only a handful of institutions in the U.S. that makes this commitment to need-blind admissions and need-based financial aid to all students, regardless of citizenship or immigration status. We are committed to making a Yale college education affordable for everyone, because Yale would simply not be the place we want it to be if only those who could afford the full cost of attendance could enroll. As my colleagues and I review applications, we know that every outstanding student we admit will receive the financial support they need to attend Yale. This empowers us to select the most promising students from the most diverse set of backgrounds without any concern for their family's financial circumstances. We also know that Yale College is a better place because it includes students from all walks of life. That's why everything we do in the Undergraduate Financial Aid Office is designed to make Yale affordable for everyone. Need-based financial aid can get complicated quickly. Every family's finances are different, and in some cases, the process of assessing a family's financial need can involve a lot of paperwork and some detailed conversations with a financial aid officer. But let's keep things simple for now. Every Yale Financial Aid Award is generated using this very simple equation. The full cost of attendance minus your financial aid in the form of scholarships equals your net cost. Let's take those one by one. We always start with the cost of attendance. This includes things that you'd expect to see on a bill from Yale. Tuition, housing, and the meal plan. But it also includes estimates for travel to and from campus a few times a year, and for course books and personal expenses. You may have heard that New Haven has some of the best pizza in the world. We expect students will spend some money comparing the options around town. 
that's the sort of thing that falls under personal expenses. The estimate for a student's travel expenses will vary based on their location. A student from Alaska or overseas will have a slightly higher cost of attendance than a student from New York City. Although it can seem scary, a high cost of attendance figure is a good thing for our need-based financial aid formula because we want it to be as inclusive as possible and because we're going to use it to assess a family's financial need. The second part of the equation is financial aid. At Yale, all financial aid is awarded in the form of scholarships, not loans. And the total amount of aid a family receives, whether just from Yale or from a combination of sources, will always match their financial need. The entire financial aid application process centers on this step, calculating how much scholarship support a family would need to be able to afford to send their student to Yale. To make that calculation, Financial aid officers review a family's income and assets, as well as some big expenses, like maybe another sibling who's also enrolled in college, or large medical bills. For families with annual incomes under $75,000 and typical assets, that calculation is easy. These families automatically qualify for what we call a zero parent share award. For these families, a Yale scholarship will cover the full cost of tuition, housing, the meal plan, and travel expenses, plus extra support for health insurance and a $2,000 startup grant in a student's first year to help with one-time expenses like a laptop. For other families, the financial aid office will generate a financial aid award that results in an affordable net cost for students and families. The average scholarship award from Yale is more than $60,000 per student per year. Net cost is the final piece of our equation. Yale suggests that students and parents plan to share their net costs. The suggested student share is always equal to Yale's standardized estimate for books and personal expenses. This means that Yale doesn't expect students to work on campus or during the summers to cover any portion of their billed expenses. And if a student receives outside scholarship funds in addition to their Yale financial aid, those can be used to reduce or eliminate that student share, often resulting in a refund that students can use to cover personal expenses, like that trip to Pepe's Pizza in New Haven's Little Italy. For most families, the process of applying for financial aid involves completing two online forms, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or the FAFSA, and the CSS Profile. They will also submit electronic copies of their most recent tax returns, at Yale, we don't have strict deadlines for applying for aid, and we don't run out of scholarship money. But we always work to ensure that admitted students and their families receive a completed financial aid award before they need to reply to Yale's offer of admission. Families can also request a review of their financial aid award if they think it's not meeting their current financial need. Remember, like admissions officers, the dedicated team at the Office of Undergraduate Financial Aid are real people. And their goal is to make Yale affordable for everyone. As you think about affording your college education, you probably have some questions about how costs will affect your finances right now and about the kinds of costs you can expect a few years down the line. Right now, you can get a personalized estimate of your Yale costs in less than three minutes using the My Intuition Quick Cost Estimator. This free tool was created by an economics professor at Wellesley College who couldn't believe that one of the most expensive purchases a family will make is also one for which they have very little reliable data on what they will actually pay. Using anonymized data from real Yale financial aid awards, the tool allows anyone to answer six short questions about their finances and receive a really good ballpark estimate of their Yale financial aid award and their net cost. The other thing you can do right now is learn about QuestBridge a fabulous national nonprofit organization that connects high achieving students from low income backgrounds with schools like Yale that offer very generous need-based aid to lower income families. Applying to Yale through QuestBridge won't change your chances of admissions or financial aid, but it can be a great way to organize your college search and to identify schools with a similar commitment to affordability. Yale has been a QuestBridge partner now for more than 15 years, and there are currently about 500 QuestBridge finalists enrolled at Yale. As you start to think about a few years in the future, Yale also has some special programs that ensure that the undergraduate experience remains affordable for all four years. 
First, Yale's financial aid will always increase along with any increases in the cost of attendance. Families reapply for financial aid each year, but if a family's financial circumstances haven't changed, their net costs won't change, even if Yale's tuition increases. By the same token, if a parent loses an income or suffers a major financial setback, families can expect that their financial aid award would increase to meet their additional need. Second, Yale has dedicated additional resources to support students on financial aid who want to study abroad or pursue an internship in the summer. Students on financial aid who study abroad during the academic year will have their aid travel with them dollar for dollar. During the summer, Yale automatically awards grants called International Study Awards for students who pursue an eligible summer experience abroad. The grants are proportional to a family's need during the academic year. So students receiving a Zero Parent Share Award will have 100% of their program cost covered. And students can apply for additional funding for more than $3 million in fellowships that are available for summer experiences abroad. Students on aid are also eligible to receive a Summer Experience Award stipend of $4,000 to $6,000 to support them during an unpaid or underpaid summer opportunity with a nonprofit organization, a government agency, an NGO, a science lab, or another research center. And finally, Yale understands that emergencies and unexpected expenses can be especially challenging for students from lower income households. That's why we created SafetyNet a central portal for students to request financial assistance for things like traveling home in the event of a family emergency or purchasing their first winter coat. Yale has awarded more than half a million dollars in safety net requests in its first five years. Let's turn now to the admissions process. We were very deliberate in selecting this photo of students in one of Yale's residential college dining halls to begin this section on admissions. We picked this photo First, because it sort of resembles the setting where we make admissions decisions. People sitting around a table, usually with a lot of snacks, talking to each other. I want you to keep that image in mind throughout this part of our session. Over the years, I have found that many people imagine that the admissions process is very mechanical, that there's some algorithm we've programmed to unweight your GPA and multiply it by your highest AP score and then maybe divide it by your social security number. That's not the case. It's also not the case that admissions officers are simply bleary-eyed bureaucrats pushing around paper while holding a big red rubber stamp that says reject on it. No. As I said, I really enjoy my job because a lot of my job involves learning about real people and then having open and engaging conversations with other real people, admissions officers, Yale College deans and faculty members while sitting around a table eating snacks. That's the admissions committee and that's how we make decisions. Real people sitting around a table talking about applicants one at a time. Now we talk about a lot of things in those committee meetings, but what we don't talk about is who we think is most likely to create a billion dollar startup company, or who's most likely to run for president or take the first steps on Mars. None of us have any idea how to predict that sort of thing. Instead, our conversations revolve around the three words you see here contribute, learn, and grow. When we select applicants, we aren't trying to identify the best students or the most deserving students, however you might define that. Instead, we are working to optimize our student body to include the students we believe have the greatest potential to contribute to the Yale environment and to get the most out of it by learning in many different ways and by growing through new experiences and opportunities. I find admissions work endlessly fascinating because every applicant is unique, and every student that we vote to admit has something very special to contribute to Yale. We know that many different types of students can thrive here, and that diversity of all kinds makes the Yale learning experience better. I believe that the Yale student body is the university's most valuable academic resource. Simply put, students at Yale learn more from their peers than anything else here. That's the second reason why we chose this photo, because it's the kind of setting that we're often thinking about when we're considering applicants. We're thinking about the fact that Yale is a residential community with more than 6,000 undergraduates from all over the world. They represent an amazing array of interests, opinions, beliefs, backgrounds, identities, aspirations, and talents. 
Yale is also a liberal arts college with more than 80 majors, a broad, flexible curriculum, and thousands of opportunities to work with leading scholars. We can't predict what students will be doing in five or 10 or 30 years from now, but we think we can predict with at least some degree of accuracy who would thrive right now in our unique environment and who would make it a stronger and a better place to learn and grow by contributing their own talents, lived experiences, and character to that community. When you apply to colleges, remember that the admissions process isn't about winning a prize or being recognized for your accomplishments. Admissions is about making a fit between individual students and individual colleges. The admissions committee will decide who among our many highly qualified applicants to admit but you will decide where you apply and what you include in your application. And those are even more important than what admissions officers do to ensuring that you will enroll in a college that's a great fit for you. Selecting the applicants with the greatest potential to contribute to Yale and to maximizing its vast resources is a daunting task. And it's one that we approach with a great deal of humility and flexibility. We know that no formula or rubric would ever be able to accommodate the complexity of backgrounds, experiences, and contexts that shape students' applications. That's why our process relies on holistic review. Another term for this is whole person review, and we've tried to summarize it here. An application to Yale includes academic information, like your high school transcript. It also includes letters of recommendation from teachers and a counselor, your personal statements that you will write, and a list of activities and commitments. You might also conduct an interview with a student, an alumni volunteer, or an admissions officer. All of these components are part of our application review because all of them help us get a better idea of who you are now and who you might be as a student on our campus. Some of those application components are quantitative. They have numbers attached to them. These are things like your GPA, exam scores, and certain awards. These can be important, but remember, that not everything that can be counted, counts. And not everything that counts can be counted. Some other application components are qualitative. They reveal qualities about you. These would include your reflections and your personal statements, what your teachers say about you, and how you describe your academic interests. At Yale, we are especially interested in students who demonstrate the qualities of curiosity, collaboration, leadership, initiative, and openness. We will also learn a lot about you and your application from your context. We receive applications from students enrolled in thousands of high schools and colleges all around the world. Understanding each applicant's context is essential to our work. It enables us to better appreciate specific accomplishments and to recognize how specific lived experiences shape each individual applicant. I've always said that I wish we didn't have the application. In its place, I wish that we could spend a day with every applicant to Yale. I think that this sort of experience would give us the insights that the admissions committee really wants. I imagine it this way. We might meet you at home for breakfast, hop on the bus with you to school. We'd meet your teachers and your coaches and your friends. Uh, we'd see the kind of person that you are in the classroom and in your activities around school. We'd get to see how you contribute to your current communities, and we'd get a great understanding of your context. I still think this is a great idea, but last year, Yale received more than 50,000 applicants for first year admission. So unfortunately, the simple limitations of space and time will prevent us from spending a day with each of our applicants. Instead, we have the application. And I say we intentionally. The application isn't just a tool for admissions officers to evaluate you. The application is an opportunity for you to reveal as much as possible about yourself with a group of people who are going to sit around a table and talk about you. Your goal as an applicant is to take advantage of that opportunity. Here's some advice for putting your best foot forward in your application. First, make sure that you select two teachers in academic areas who know you and who like you. Think of the teachers who came to know you best and who really appreciated the contributions that you made to their classrooms. This might not be the teachers who gave you the highest grades. In fact, a teacher who saw you work to improve in the class may give even better insights. Secondly, use the written pieces of the application to talk to the admissions committee. 
I've read about 50,000 college essays in my career now, and I have to tell you, there's no formula to follow. If there were, I promise I would tell you. Great essays, though, in my experience, they can take many different forms, but they always do three things. They are thoughtful, they are reflective, and they convey a student's voice. Keep those three things in mind. A thoughtful essay showcases mature and complex thought, and it shows how a student's mind works. Secondly, perhaps most importantly, a college essay must be reflective. It needs to be about you. Avoid the trap of thoughtfully writing about something else or somebody else. It must be about you. Even if it makes you a little uncomfortable, remember that your job is to write an essay about you that speaks to that admissions committee. And finally, a successful essay conveys a student's authentic voice. How you write about yourself can resonate with what you write about yourself and magnify your essay's impact. Lastly, remember that you are your own best resource and you know better than anyone else what should be included with your application. Before we close, I wanna share a few specific details on your options for applying for first year admissions. You'll find detailed instructions on our website. Yale accepts three different applications, the Common Application, the QuestBridge application, and the Coalition application, which is hosted on a platform called SCORE. There is no advantage associated with using any platform, but you want to select one and only one application. With each application, you'll complete a section that can go to multiple colleges and then answer some Yale-specific questions. The QuestBridge application is for students from lower income backgrounds. Students first submit their application to the QuestBridge organization, and if they are named a finalist, they have the option to use their completed QuestBridge application to apply to Yale. You should talk with a counselor in your school about which option is right for you. We also have three possible application deadlines. The first is associated with the QuestBridge match process. Students first apply to QuestBridge, and if they are named a finalist, they have the option to apply for something called the QuestBridge match. This is an application round where students are evaluated both for admissions and financial aid at the same time. Students who match with Yale are given an offer of admission and a financial aid award that has a zero parent share. Those decisions usually come out around December. The second option is what's called single choice early action. This has a November 1st deadline and students who apply through early action receive an admissions decision in the middle of December. The most important thing to know about early action at Yale is that there is no advantage. If you think about it from our perspective as admissions officers, it benefits us to be conservative when we are evaluating early action applicants. The last thing we want is to find ourselves in January and February reviewing applications from our regular decision applicants and thinking, don't, why are we out of space? If we have any hesitations, a student will be deferred. In that case, we're gonna do a full application review uh, and evaluate them along with the regular decision applicants. Our regular decision round has a deadline of January 2nd and students will find out if they've been admitted in uh, the end of March. Your choices here should reflect your preferences. Remember, there's no strategy or gamesmanship. And I recommend you speak with your counselor about the option that makes the most sense for you. Thanks for taking some time to learn about Yale's approach to financial aid and admissions. I hope you've learned something new that will help you in your college search process, or at least make it seem a little less scary. To learn more about how to apply, check out the extensive resources on our websites. You'll also find links on those sites to our quick cost estimator, and you can find our admissions podcast called Inside the Yale Admissions Office that I co-host with my colleague on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to see more about Yale, be sure to follow at Yale, at Yale Admissions, and at Handsome Dan, our lovable English Bulldog mascot on Instagram. We also hope to welcome you to campus for a visit sometime soon.